As someone who has used GH cameras since the GH1, I'm always excited to see a new model released. Not just because I work at DP Review, but because I'm genuinely curious to see how Panasonic continues to evolve the product line. To me, the real innovation on the GH7 is the addition of 32-bit float audio, not only because it's the first mirrorless camera to include it, but because it's so helpful for the type of shooters who often use a camera like the GH7. Small teams or individuals working on a budget. Much of my own video work falls into that category, and I know from experience how easy it is to screw up audio. When you're shooting solo, you're wearing a lot of hats. It's easy to miss a detail here or there. Of course, 32-bit float audio only solves some audio problems. The addition of internal ProRes RAW recording is a logical one, though it's not the first mirrorless camera to get internal ProRes RAW. The Nikon Z8 and Z9 already support that. There was a time when you could count on the GH series to be the first to cross the line with new features like this, but the rest of the market is catching up. And that's okay. I don't think the GH series needs to be the first to market with every new video feature in order to be successful. But mirrorless cameras have become so good at video in recent years that new features often count more as refinements than game changers. It's a sign of a maturing market and a maturing GH line. I'm also glad to see the GH7 receive expanded access to Panasonic's real-time LUT system and integration with the Lumix Lab app. As a camera reviewer, I don't think I fully appreciated the value of real-time LUTs until I started using them on the Lumix S9, where they're a core part of the camera's experience. While I've mostly focused on using LUTs for photos, there's a lot of value in them for videography too, especially the ability to apply LUTs to proxy files as they're generated. The GH series has matured a lot over the years, with improvements counting as refinements rather than revolutionary updates. To me, the real sign that the GH series has reached a new level of maturity is that, in many ways, the GH7 is relatively unchanged from the GH6. But at this point, it's a matter of making a really good product even better and creating a consistent platform for users to work from. And that consistency of form factor and user experience makes the move from the GH6 to the GH7 about as seamless as possible.